Tonight on the hot seats, we got Mr. Travis Hill, our lead trombonist, as well as our audio engineer. Travis is a graduate of the University of the Arts in Philadelphia, where he has trombone performance degree, jazz focus, of course, and a degree in music education. Uh, currently, Travis directs the uh, ensembles, as well as the award-winning Black Dog Jazz Band at... Travis, uh, yeah. is it Wissahickon? It is. Or Wissahickon? Wissahickon. Wissahickon. I should probably put some phonics in there just so I can actually read it the next time. But Wissahickon Middle School in Ambler, PA. Uh, Travis has got a lovely wife as well as an awesome dog named Tempo. Uh, he's a great guy and a solid trombone leader. So, Travis, welcome to the hot seat tonight. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be talking a lot about what you do with the audio stuff. But we're also going to be talking to my right-hand man for the last, God, oh my gosh, how long have I known you? Too long. Yeah, that's what they all say. But man, I've known this guy for quite some time. He's been my right-hand man in the Philadelphia uh, on community jazz ensemble called the Philly Croc Jazz Orchestra, as well as our lead tenor player here with the Accidental Big Band. Uh, Jordan Grafe, he got his bachelor's degree at Temple University and his master's degree at the University of the Arts. <laughs> Go Owls. Uh, he's in his eighth year teaching class instrumental music. In other words, he's a woodwind specialist for the school district of Philadelphia. Uh, he is now celebrating his what? This is your first year of marriage with an awesome cat named Benjamin. And congrats on getting a new house, too. Thank you. Yeah, past the uh, the one year mark, November 1st. So New house, yeah, all downhill from there. Before, and uh, yeah, anniversary in the new house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. I'm excited to check it out whenever we're out of this uh, unprecedented time and unique situation, breaking Casa de Grave's house. Or of course, yes. <laughs> Anywho, so gentlemen, again, welcome to tonight. Um, yeah, tonight we're just going to be really talking a little bit more about what it is you guys do, like audio wise and what do you do video wise with some of your students and i think tonight i want to start with um jordan i want to start with you tonight and you know i'd like to ask you like what do you do prep wise in getting ready for recordings like this yourself and and for things like mainly ensembles like this right now because obviously we're not able to play anywhere and we can't really do what we used to do like with the pkjo the philly croc jazz orchestra we would rehearse every monday night and then you know have a good many a gigs i can't even think of how many we had the last time we were actually able to play out but it was a good number but what what do you do now that we're in you know we're kind of in these bubbles that we're not allowed to move around or go outside or do anything that we used to at this point um well obviously it's very different and we know that we've been doing it for a long time so uh it's it's really kind of forced i think all of us recording wise to to really um self-evaluate even more extensively because I mean, don't get me wrong. We're always hoping for the best product, but like if you don't play something absolutely perfectly and you're in a section, um, you know, it goes by unnoticed or it goes by like this, especially on a fast tune, but when you're recording, it's there forever. So um, it, it forces you to kind of look at that next level of, um, I don't want to say necessarily professionalism because we're all professionals for it, but it's um, really, again, I guess self-evaluating without finding another term to make sure that everything is like as as best as it possibly can be. Um, I don't know. I think I kind of do it a similar way. Like I've been telling my students since it's all virtual of listen, play along and then record so that you get a couple takes at it because I mean, there's, you know, there's very few people, even the greatest musicians and everything out there that, do things in one take and it's perfect. Um, you know, we, we can't all be bird. We can't all be, you know, the Basie orchestra and play it down one time. So if we could, that would be amazing. And this would be a really, really easy pandemic. But uh, I think it's just a, a matter of uh, going through things more than once and uh, really going for the best, best option every time. So uh, try and listen as often as possible to really kind of uh, emulate as best as, as best as you can. Um, it's kind of fun doing it. Yeah. with like your tunes and new stuff. So you don't have something specific to, to do. And, um, you know, it's always great to emulate, but really you can kind of have a little bit of your own free reign, which is kind of nice. And I think it's, it's a, it's a cool thing to do instead of just playing uh, arrangements or, or, um, tunes that everybody knows, which don't get me wrong. We all love them, but it's, it's nice to have something new in the works too. 
Well, don't worry. That checks in the mail. So thank you for that kind plug. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I bet, you, I bet you it bounces. I probably will. I mean, I am from Pittsburgh. What can I say? <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. So like you were saying, like, you don't do a lot of like a lot of these um, professionals, they don't tend to do a lot of extra alternate takes where I, I think they actually do quite a few alternate takes. But for, I feel like for us and correct me if I'm wrong, I know for myself when I'm recording here in my office that I tend to do like four or five uh, like ensemble takes and then try to pick the best sounding one or even when I'm editing myself uh, for other projects that I do that I, tend, I tend to try and chunk out, okay, this section sounded just a little bit better than this one. The inflection here was much cleaner than the other one there. Oh, I like this dynamic here better as opposed to right there. Is that something that you find yourself doing with the ensemble stuff or, or is it more or less like whatever the number one take is, you go with that. Uh, and I know with, uh, I know with solo stuff, I mean, we all, including professionals do like multiple takes and then kind of pick the best one that they go with. Or sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, uh, professionals, they'll try and do that kind of a thing where they chunk out, okay, this section could fit here because I really liked how that lick turned out there. I know that's something that they do, but not all the time. But what, what about the ensemble stuff? Do you find yourself like doing the same kind of a thing that I do where it's four to five takes, maybe a little bit more than that? And maybe crop it up and stuff like that or what do you do oh sure sure i don't sorry if, if i give the impression that it's like one taken and, and people are done like i know they do more than one as well um but i think they probably take less time to go through stuff than myself included because they're just you know they're they're the greats for a reason um right so it's uh, i like to do many as well uh i think the biggest thing and i i notice it and thank god we have travis here to edit and adjust things for us so that we can try and balance as best as possible but it's like i i play saxophone i am terrible with knowing stuff about microphones and all that kind of stuff so especially with the recording idea it's a, it's a new way to look at it too of being your another three inches back the sound is totally different and it really doesn't blend well, ideally. And it's so I there are some charts like some future ones that I won't give names away for that I definitely need to chunk because there's got some there's definitely some spots in them. But um, I, I like to try and get a, a practice apart that I know that I can play it straight through unless there's, you know, giant rests for solos or something, but at least play like big, big chunks together so that the um, I guess sound quality and levels are, are very similar. Um, and that's why you have someone like Travis who can make, you know, all of us sound way better so that we can do it. But, um, I, I, I do like to take a couple takes, try and go with the best one. But like, like we've said, you may have your cat come in and meow mid take and you're like, oh, this was great. That's not great tail. because yeah, you know, <laughs> dog comes in barks or whatever. And it's like, you, you just don't know, or your phone goes off and it, it things happen and it's very, it's very different. You know, we like to, we like to think, okay, well, this will take three minutes. I know I've had it. And it's like, oh, this will take five minutes to quick record through this part. I know it pretty well. Phone buzzes midway through and it's very like audible because you had it next to you for something. And it's like, well, crap, that takes gone. So, you know, you learn, you learn lessons really quick and things we should all know, you know, don't have your phone on or even, you know, totally silent, do not disturb, whatever it may be. Airplane mode is, is my new like best friend during recordings. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I like to do multiple takes. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's no way I'm, uh, able to always get one take on all of these. I wish. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely, definitely difficult. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. Um, so Travis over to you then. So Jordan hit on a lot of the, the aspects that, you know, we're going to talk about here with you tonight, and hopefully you can give us some examples of what you've done with, uh, this recording and how it relates, but he, he kind of alluded to the fact that you do a lot of uh, audio magic, not to say that, you know, we, we, we're not nailing it all, you know, right at once, but I guess what, it, I guess what I'm getting from Jordan, and I think this is what I think too, and you can correct us if we're both totally wrong, uh, which probably is the case. Uh, but sometimes you need to like, you know, EQ it just a little bit more because a lot of the times, you know, we don't have I mean, a lot of us don't have the studio quality equipment or the, you know, the equipment necessary to get this stuff done. So what is it that you do to get the sound um, that we hear on a lot of these recordings for accidental uh, big band? So first of all, Jordan, I have you totally tricked that there's any magic going on here or that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I uh, I know. I at the very beginning of all of this, I, I texted John and I said, "Hey, I have Logic. I've used it a couple times. If you need some help, I, I could I could maybe help some." And he responded, "Absolutely. Can you mix the sound?" And I was like, "Sure." Because I think we've all been there uh, in our in our professional lives where the answer is always yes, and you'll figure it out later. Um, <laughs> so in my head, I saw it as like, a, well, let's let's learn. Um, years years ago, I had I had gotten a lot of recording gear uh, at school. Um, we did an awesome fundraiser, and we were able to buy uh, good microphones and a soundboard and all of that good stuff, and have some pretty good equipment at school to use. And it was the same kind of deal where in my head, it was like, I think this will work. I'm pretty sure I can plug this into that and then this and there, and then it, uh, it'll work probably. And bring all my kids in, we started playing and I was like, you know, please, please let it work. And it did. Um, and that gave me right there as like the first, the first chance I had to like learn how to use a DAW, a digital audio workstation. Um, and so I, I used Logic I didn't know what 99% of the buttons did. <clears throat> I just started kind of clicking and hoping for the best. Um, and kind of like learning instrument, uh, right? Just kind of push all the Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> just kind of blow into it and see what happens and you know, whatever. Um, Google is your best friend. I've watched countless YouTube videos and read yeah. so many articles yep. and tutorials. And because I think all of us as, as musicians, we know what we're looking for um, sound wise like we know what we're we're listening for what's the what's the goal it's how do you do it in logic it's it's like mm. i hear what i have as the sound file and i know what it's supposed to be in the end what things do i put on it to do that right and so like step one is what are like the normal things that like other sound engineers I, I should say what are the things sound engineers are doing because i that is not <laughs> that's a nice term you've used to describe me but uh <laughs> maybe i've well, also i mean the way i think of it is like you're kind of like scotty from star trek man i mean you're the miracle worker here you're down in the engineering aka the audio engineering and i think uh i i, I think you do a great job with it so i mean again engineering is definitely the right word if i have to say because you're doing a lot of things that i i've tried to use logic myself and i just don't have that kind of a time to sit and do it but you've like you said you've kind of played around with it so again i didn't mean to interrupt go ahead no 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 worries i uh i always think of it i'm i'm very techy i i love technology and i collect as much of it as i can and um i you know i i always say to everybody when it comes to tech there is no self-destruct button. There's nothing that's going to put you in danger. Just click it and see what happens. And if it, if it doesn't work, that, you know, I'm a Mac guy. So that's what command Z is for. Like undo. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do. Um, and so when I, when I first started all the way back with Squatty Roo, our first track, I made sure that I took everybody's files and had them saved separately. So that if I screwed them up somehow, I could just delete it, drag it in fresh, and pretend like I didn't make a million mistakes on it. <laughs> Dude, and you just such start a good job clicking. on that first one too. <laughs> I appreciate that. It's uh, you know, you just start clicking on stuff. It's like, well, what happens if I put this effect? I mean, logic comes with you know hundreds of options, so you just start clicking. And if it sounds better, then you you pick the right one. If it sounds worse, we'll turn that off and pretend like it didn't exist. And then you start stacking them and you see, okay, well, if I put this one first and then this effect and then this effect, now what does it sound like? What if I switch these two in the effect chain? Now what? And, you know, you start to figure out by, by now I have a pretty clear idea when I get everybody's, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, when I get everybody's like charts into me, all the recordings, I kind of have like a, a checklist in my mind of like, what do I do first? what happens when and what is the final step before I submit it. Um, the little behind the scenes that everybody doesn't know is John and I have a, a Google Drive, just the two of us, where I kind of edit it all and I send it to him and I always call it V1.0. And then he gives me a million notes of like, hey, check out all this stuff. Because, you know, for me, when you get to the end of editing, it's just noise. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've heard the song... 50,000 times it's just noise 
Dude, the same like thing about writing and go. composing. Yeah. <laughs> same exact thing. Same yep. thing. You just you just need fresh ears. So I get to a point where I go, good enough. I know it's not correct yet. It's not done, but like I can't I can't listen to this anymore. I I I, I don't know anymore. And I just send it to John and go, tell me what to fix next. And we do that a couple times. Usually we get to like version three, version four, version five, and then it's like that's the the best version of it all, and that's what we wind up releasing. But I kind of have like an idea of what I do along each step, when I'm going to apply each thing, and then when it goes to John for that first time. And then you always give really good feedback of, again, you know exactly what you want to change. And then we just got to learn how to do that in logic. Like what, what do I click to make that happen? Right. And it's usually not, not as hard as you think. It's just, you know, when you, when you sit down and use like Microsoft Word, you know what to click. And, and when you're typing up a paper, you know how to change your margins and, and double your spacing. And you know how to do all of that kind of stuff because you've just done it a yep. bunch. Now that we've, you know, released a few tracks and I've been using Logic a lot more, now I kind of know where all those things that I want to use are. And I'm also starting to learn there were better ways of doing things and I did it the dumb way months ago. And now I'm like, oh, if I had just clicked that before, oh, that's what I was trying to do. And it took me like seven different effects stacked in the right way, all tweaking it a little bit. And now like somebody goes, you know, you could have just put like this one patch on it. I go, okay, I'll remember that for next time. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, cool. it's, it's mostly just that like click and pray <laughs> and then if it works <laughs> you look like a genius and if it doesn't well i didn't send it to anybody yet so they don't know that i that i screwed up <laughs> <laughs> it's all about that end result exactly nobody has to see steps one through a thousand you just you just see the final result and i could lie and pretend like oh yeah i did that yesterday afternoon in about 20 minutes <laughs> Yeah, cool. Well, that's great. That's great. So we're going to stick with you for a hot second here, Travis. So, you know, you talked about how a lot of the editing, it's pretty simple now. Like it's, I don't want to say simple, but it's a lot easier than what it was from the, from the beginning, because you learned a lot about it. And I know, like, like, I know a lot of us, like myself included, um, you know, we, we don't have the technology, or at least I didn't have tech, like I didn't have this microphone for a while. And then I eventually was like, you know what? I'm starting to do a lot now. I need to actually invest in this. So I did. Um, same thing with my video editing software, which I use Final Cut Pro. Um, but for you, like you had put together something that you sent out to us, like a PDF file or something like that, that just kind of like helped guide people along. Do you have any like suggestions or tips or anything like that? Or would you be able to share that kind of a, a PDF doc with anybody that's currently uh, listening or anything like that? I mean, I can always download that again and then place it in our um, behind the scenes well put it on this youtube uh post whenever i post it tomorrow yeah um so first things first that i would say is know know your audience of like who who's recording so for us with accidental big band you know we're all professionals so when I typed that thing up, it was kind of like I went to the medium and high end solutions for an individual to have. But for my students at school, you know, I teach at a middle school with yeah. sixth to eighth grade kids who many of them really love band in middle school. And then when they get to high school, they have 50,000 other interests and band disappears a little bit or, or maybe a lot of it for some of them. Um, so the idea of them going out and spending hundreds of dollars on recording equipment it's not feasible um right this this thing is one of the greatest recording devices that they have and while we as professionals would like we would look at that and go what you're going to use your phone for a professional recording but for the kids that's the best microphone they have you know the laptop that our schools give it's great for school stuff but the microphone is you know potato quality at best <laughs> so um I do get recordings from them through their laptop mic and you do what you can with it. Cause like, no matter how good of a sound engineer you are, which I am not, but regardless, the microphone is, it, it, it picks up what it picks up and you get the file as is. Um, there aren't effects that fix bad microphones. So if you're, or if you're on the that fix, uh, side, bad, uh, bad clothing either. Yeah. <laughs> if you're on the <laughs> professional side, 
invest and and invest it at the level that that you're comfortable with. Um, if you got a hundred bucks, there are hundred dollar solutions out there. If you've got yeah. five hundred bucks, there's five hundred dollar solutions out there. If you want to throw lots of money away, well, there are plenty of places you can do that. And my pocket is one of them. Um, <laughs> there are there are options galore. So the first thing when I when I typed up that guide, I was gearing it towards towards professionals who who maybe just don't have the the stuff at home. Um, so I, I list like USB microphones. So so things like like what you're using, um, it's the Apogee, right? Yeah, the Apogee Plus. Man, I love this thing. Like I, somebody recommended it. Um, oh stink! I'm gonna forget the name. Better Sax, Jay Metcalf recommended this. He had like three or four that he was reviewing, and he highly recommended this one for audio, like talking what we're doing right now, for recording for your saxophone, clarinet. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, whatever the case may be. And it's been great. I mean, for, for what I paid for it, it's definitely paid for itself over and over again, like at least three or four times. It's, it's super awesome for what I can do with it. What I mean is like investing, you know, as professionals, we'll get the use out of it. I mean, the same way that we invested in our horns and, and, you know, mouthpieces and mutes and, and like, we put some money into it and maybe when we were not as flush with cash, we bought what we had to, to get by. And yeah. then as the cash comes in, you buy the better solution that fits your, your real needs. You can do the same thing with sound equipment. Um, so one of, one of my favorite mics that I list in the USB mic category is the Yeti snowball. It's $50 mm. and it sounds way better than a $50 microphone should ever sound. Um, it's, it's great. And while I don't think you're going to find, you know, a bunch of guys out in LA doing, you know, studio recordings on them. If that's what you have at your house, that thing is, is going to be very serviceable for you. And it's 50 bucks. Then you can buy, you know, other like blue Yeti mics, you can buy the Apogee mics and they range anywhere from a hundred to two fifty, three hundred 300 bucks. They're all awesome. Um, and they just work. You just plug it in and ta-da, you don't even have to be all that techie. You have a working microphone. Um, I also love the standalone recorders. I, I feel like at this point, Zoom as the company, not the, uh, the conferencing software, but the recording equipment, I feel like I should be like sponsored by them or something because I, <laughs> I have bought a lot of stuff and tell people to buy their stuff all the time too. Um, I've had, I've had like four of their recorders now, if it's mine personally, or I have them through the school. Um, and they're all great. Um, and they have a range that's like a hundred bucks all the way up through like four or 500 bucks, depending on what you need. And they work as a plug-in USB microphone, but they also dump your recordings onto SD cards and stuff like that. So a better solution, if you want to take that on a gig, set your recorder off in the corner of the room and capture what you're playing. It's yeah. a couple extra bucks, but you get something more out of it. And so that then, seems like that would like both those options would definitely be something that as directors, we could use or as teachers that we could use and even like the yeti one i mean for students you know not knowing how long we're going to be here that's actually not a bad idea but the phone like you said is still definitely one of those high quality types of things oh yeah um so i know we're like we're still just a little bit pressed for time so would you mind showing us real quick like what you do audio wise for the mixing stuff and then maybe give like a few pointer suggestions uh and while you're switching that over uh while you're getting ready to show us that um for everyone that's currently logged in and listening um you know two programs that you can definitely check out to use this stuff for i mean obviously not everybody's got logic and not everybody's got a macbook but audacity is also a very good program to use audacity is a super program to use for this kind of a thing and you can use it on macs too and then for mac if you don't have logic um like a lot of us don't um garage band super awesome super easy to use it's a free app and um, i mean for, free after the purchase price of a mac <laughs> well i mean you also get it with your uh your iphones too you can download the app uh the app for free with that but but i mean like it's still an application with a free with a mac of course that it you know it's a great free quality software i mean it's really unbelievably good for, I used for, how... for years before having logic and the only difference is logic has eight thousand more bells and whistles <laughs> yeah so you're right logic, i mean i use want the bells and whistles garage band is perfect and i still use it now even though i'm more versed in logic yeah the projects i do in garage band because it's easy to go in cut a track and export it 
like that and i won't get bogged down and but i could i could go in and do good nope leave it alone it, you're not doing that that's not what garage band is necessarily for <laughs> right cool well, let's let's I mean, take a look at what you got there i mean maybe you can give us like a quick uh like an idea of something that is something simple and easy for us to as directors that are not burst in this to do. And then Jordan, I'm going to throw it off to you afterwards. And we're going to kind of discuss like what you did for your kids and how you got them to play. Cause ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't, I don't know if it's live Jordan or not like for the public, but his videos, when he sent it to me just to get input, I was like, dang, dude, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> that was like superb. I was rather impressed. <laughs> Yeah, Travis, go ahead. Take it away real quick. So I think probably most important when you're doing these audio projects, and John, you probably have done this a million and you would agree for, for video stuff too, organization. Um, yes. You, you see, I have all the colors set up. So like at the very top of my track, I have all of my drums in red, then my rhythm section in purple, then soloists um, are kind of in pink. And then like Jordan, this little like green chunk right here is your melody. I, I just dragged it up out of your part. But so it's not technically pink because it's not a solo, but it's a solo. So um, that's kind of how I organize. And then my saxes are green, sax and flute. Uh, trumpets are all blue and trombones are all orange. Um, so right off the bat, that organization I think is huge before you begin any of these projects, because when you're trying to fix, there's like a, a little thing you want to do in the trumpets. Well, know that you're clicking on a trumpet file to begin with. Um, that That's helpful. Um, the other thing is not being afraid to cut files and do all sorts of goofy stuff to them. Again, like I said earlier, if you ever make a mistake with it, well, then just simply command Z or delete the mistake file out and drag the fresh one back in and pretend like it never happened. So um, you can see, you know, like if I zoom in a little bit here, um, if I'm looking at like, John, here's, here's you, Alto one. And there's a little chunk right here where I deleted it out because there are effects I can put in to make sure I'm not going to hear your, your chair squeaking or something, or, you know, shifting in your chair and, and, getting a little table movement or like there's a million things I can do, but if you're not playing notes there, I don't want to hear you at all anyway. So I'm just going to cut your file and delete it out because it's, it was just meant to be silence. And as you go don't along, say anything about that. yeah, there's just silence galore that I just cut out of everybody's part. Cause you know what? It's much better if, if I don't even have to try to hide you, it's just no sound there at all. I think those are like the first two, like big things is like organize it properly use colors if you want to and i prefer it that way and then chunk it up so you can also when i'm working i'm i'm usually working on like you know a chunk like right here i might only look at this section that i have you know under the yellow and that's that's it and i don't need to look at this yet you know it keeps it easy as i'm going along on my checklist let me fix this section or this section um, again, organization and chunking it down, um, huge. Um, but a lot of it just comes down to, you know, you look at all of this stuff over here and you start thinking, well, what if I click that? And then what if I click that? And then, oh, oh God, what happens then? And the answer is click it. What does it do? If it's bad, turn it, turn it off, undo it. And if it's good, congratulations, you're a genius. You did something really cool. Keep cool. doing that until it gets to be the way you want it. Don't be afraid yeah. of clicking stuff. Oh, man. Well, thanks for sharing that. I appreciate yeah. that. Let's have you go ahead and stop sharing your screen there. And then um, we'll reclaim the host here, I guess. <clears throat> so, Jordan, over to you, my friend. Um, so, you know, like I know you're working in the school district of Philadelphia, and I'm sure, you know, that your students, it's hard right now just trying to get them to respond. And I know, Travis, you and I have talked about that, too, about having your students just respond. But Jordan, you show, shared with me uh, back in 2020, uh, before the Christmas break, <laughs> um, like your, the video that your kids were able to do. Do you want to talk about how you were able to get them to do that and like what kind of techniques you had them, um, them do and stuff? Sure. Um, so the, the biggest thing for me is it's obviously very, very, very different. Like if you're used to seeing kids on a weekly schedule or twice a week, depending on what your situations may be. Um, you know, if a kid's really struggling with something, they can do it again. 
here it's just them and they are being forced similar to what i was talking about like us on the professional level of yeah. self-evaluation you're asking 10 year olds to do like i'm mostly elementary to clarify um you're asking uh you're asking 10 through 12 year old kids to be like well is this correct and it's not as easy as being like here's the difference like play f sharp play f natural or whatever the note may be they they may not know you can put all the resources up they may have trouble online it, there's so many different things that can happen and so the big thing i try and do um is try and get everything up up to speed ahead of time so um, kind of a big buzzword for teachers, you'll, you'll know this one, differentiated education or differentiated instruction, depending on what it is, and it's everybody's favorite word. Um, and so my way of, of utilizing that right now is um, through Audacity, like you said, which I love, because I'm mostly a PC person myself, but um, is you, can, you can adjust the tempo, and they have really boosted the quality of, of uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of how that does for slowing down. And so then conversely, if you know what tempo a kid is, is recording something at and the piece is 144 and, you know, little Billy can only play it at 120, well, you can take Billy's recording and speed it up and he fits right in. And he doesn't have to worry about the fact that, you know, he's doing it at home and can only log on once a week because he's sharing a computer with a sibling or whatever it may be, mm. or his mm. Chromebook battery is broken yeah. or whatever the issue is. So, and, uh, you know, also it's, I, I think it's a lot, it's, it's a big thing to ask of them. They're being forced to do everything remotely. Everything is virtual for Philadelphia right now, which, you know, safety is obviously the primary concern Absolutely. Um, as it should be. Um, but you know, you're asking kids to be figuring out a lot of stuff on their own. And so on one hand, when you're doing it with all subjects, it's very tough. Like I'm, I'm a big proponent. Like I use essential elements personally for my younger kids. And it's like, I don't know what this note is. Where is it? Where can you find it? Because like if they go home for the week and you don't see them till their next lesson, what can they do? But now they're having to do that nonstop. And it's very different than you guiding them through the process and just forcing them to do it all the time. And so like, luckily I have a bunch of the essential elements as PDFs. So like, you know, kids can just do it all from their computer, but you know, and then you see them share a screen and they've got a hundred tabs open because they've got that for every teacher. It's, it's very overwhelming. Um, yeah. So uh, in terms of the uh, getting a little off track here, but in terms of the recording, you may only get one. It's a little different than being like, you know, you asking me, Hey, like this one sounds funky or like the, the, um, the level's really, really low. Could you do it again? So that you know, it, and it's like, okay, like I said, jokingly about, you know, cat meowing in the middle or dog barking, but like it takes a minute or two and you upload it. But if you're asking a kid, well, maybe that was their best shot because they're still working on this and they don't have time for other things or, you know, younger siblings asleep, they can't only record it this moment. You may not get that. So I like to have varying tempos for kids where they can feel comfortable and accurate. And um, I did do some YouTube like demos with it where I just did like a channel and it was like, this is Mr. Graves thing. And it's like trumpets, here you go. Watch out for E flat, two and three, two and three. Make sure you play this note. And you really kind of hit the things that they may not play consistently. Um, and really, you know, the, the nice thing about something like that is pause. Oh, let me check it again. Review it. They're like, I don't get it. Watch it again. Like, here's what it is. And it's like, if you know, you can, you can talk through it and it's, it, it's it's very impersonal, which is very, very difficult. Like building rapport with your students is so important, um, you know, just as it is with relationships or, or other people in general. And to do that like this is, you know, you, I, like I have a new school that I, I started at this year um, through the, so I traveled to multiple schools um, and there's a new one this year. And it's like, I know some of the kids that I've, I've met in passing through various, um, you know, festivals within the city and stuff, but it's like, you're meeting them remotely. And so like, I, by nature, am a pretty sarcastic person, and I really had to tone that down at the beginning of the year because some kids were, like, mortified, and I was like, wait, you don't have, like, you can't tell because it's it's obviously very different, so you're, you're kind of <laughs> constantly adjusting, and it, it's, again, I'm circling very, very out of just the recording. It's all relative. Aspect. It's all relative. But, minor. Yeah, it, it kind of circles back to it is it's you know, you, you really have to have everything similar to like Travis said, very organized, very um, prepared ahead of time, especially for students, because they're going to, you know, they're, they're, they're looking to just get everything correct. And it's like they, the building process is very slow. And so 
asking them to be thinking 10 steps ahead at the age of 10 when they just, you know, they're happy to play hot cross buns is very, very different sure. than being like, hey, go go play through your part for me here. So um, I, I, I try and set them up with as many different options and modalities of learning if we want to be fancy about it um, so that you can, you know, make them as as successful as possible. And then like Travis mentioned, you you know you cut out their little baby brother screaming in the background, and you chunk out little <laughs> clips of of them moving and stuff. Um, one of my favorite tricks that I use uh, is if you have a a strong there's there's a very big difference, especially in like concert band music, um, and especially for younger groups. A lot of time, it's just the tuba part is the trombone part down an octave. Double your best trombone player, or I had a baritone player at one school, and Garage Band has the the octave drop and so mm. put that in just uh you know and it's the same kid playing so like that same b natural that he played by accident was still in there <laughs> but it just makes the group sound huge and it's not it's not a fake recording it's just i used you know another kid to make them sound like you know what they would and that was <laughs> yeah yeah uh, well, some of those uh, Charlie Parker stories may not be uh, elementary appropriate for for him, but um, you know, it, it's, it's similar to Travis. I, I tried different things. You know, you get yeah. kids where they are right here for the video and they're recording, playing like this, and it's like, okay, I, I had one student for a video in the spring where he stood, and I just saw his shins for the video, and so it was like, how do I incorporate this poor kid? So it wasn't him playing his instrument; it was him like getting everything set to record so we can see, you know, see the poor kid's face. I feel bad if it's just like his shins and his tops of his sneakers for a video where everybody else's face and instrument right. is. Right. Um, so yeah, I try and set up everything. I do, like I said, um, slow down tracks for kids. I do like a click track, just like um, you would to kind of set them up. So they, I always do four measures and the kids always tell me that it's way too long. And I say, you know what, it's better that than you going like this, fumbling with your instrument and then, you know, God forbid it breaks doing it virtually, like the likelihood of repairs is very, very slim or like we hope parents right don't now, like, yeah. super glue anything together. That's like the, <clears throat> the scariest part. But um, yeah, just trying to, I, I do, I try and do a lot of front loading with everything. Here's all the stuff. And then I, I break things down in very small chunks for recording too. It's like, here's an eight measure phrase. Like I usually try not to do more than like 16 um for the kids that are on like full ensemble music i mean i luckily have all the the play alongs for essential elements so it's like nice. play along with this and they hate the tracks because they are cheesy but then they laugh about them and it's like they at least know what they're supposed to play it's helpful on that front so it's like oh sure you know you're you're also trying to teach kids how to practice and it's not you know everybody's heard the adage of practice makes perfect and in this sense it's I, I've really, really grown to hate that phrase on the basis that it makes permanent. And so if poor little Billy again is playing his his whatever, you know, his trombone or whatever and keeps playing the wrong note. And he's like, no, 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 I'm playing B flat. And it's like seventh position is not B flat, Billy. Like, well, I practiced it. You practiced it wrong. And so, yes, you did practice. And that is great. But it's it's that next level tool of accuracy because you're not with them as consistently to really correct things as, as soon as possible. You know, you, you see a mistake and we try and fix it right away so that, you know, there's not because the more you do something wrong, it's it's a harder and harder habit to fix. And we all are aware of that. So, yeah, especially like trying to do that right now and in, in the settings that we're currently in where we're at home and, you know, we're over Zoom, Google Meets or or Microsoft Teams, whatever the case may be. Um, it's definitely a lot harder to fix it like that. But you're right. I, I've grown to dislike the, the phrase, uh, practice makes perfect right now. I mean, it, it, I've never really been one for that anyways. I've always been about, you know, you know, practice makes you more aware of what's going on is what I usually try to say to my students. Uh, cause I mean, let's be real. Nobody's going to be perfect. We can try to aspire to that, but really what I try to have my kids understand is that you know, you need to be more aware of what's going on and having a video or a recording like this now, it definitely makes them more aware of what they're doing as opposed to, you know, any other time outside of that. But, you know, you're right in the fact that you need to front load everything. Cause I mean, I know when I send it out charts to you guys, that's what I try to do. I try to get those folders set up or at least have everything ready to go months in advance and such like that. 
Um, but you know, things happen and people, you know, tend to get busy with other things and I totally get it. And we all, it happens to all of us. It happens to me quite often, but you know, at least, at least it's there and you don't have to really worry about, Oh, did I send this to you? Is it my fault? Did I forget to actually upload this? No. Yeah. Give them all the information that they need, but then give the gentle pushes and reminders with that. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Cool. Yeah. Well, you know, we've got about 14 minutes left before our video drops. So let's go ahead and hit, um, let's do a quick um, hit on the charities. And then if we have any questions in the chat or if anybody that's currently tuned in has any questions uh, for any one of us, myself included, we can then open the floor up to that. So Jordan, since we just left with, uh, just had you on, let's ask, have you uh, explain your charity at this point. Um, so I was living in Philly again, uh, post Temple life and everything. Uh, wow. And my, my wife and I uh, adopted a cat uh, through paws and it was great. Um, they were wonderful to work with. He's been amazing. Of course, now that I'm talking about him, he's not going to come in and, and, you know, investigate or, or ruin mid thing. But, um, <laughs> you know, people, people had uh, a bunch of great ones that they've done in, in previous ones. And so I was thinking, let's, let's do something. Everybody's done music ones, which don't get me wrong. I'm all for, I was like, oh, let's see what's something a little, a little different. And we've loved him since we got him and Benjamin's been great. And um, they're really pushing for no kill shelters and everything, which is obviously I'm, I'm a huge fan of. Um, and you know, he's, he's been wonderful since and he's adapted very well. He's like the most sociable cat I've ever known. I've always grown up with like dogs and don't get me wrong. I still, still love dogs. Um, but this is literally the most, Oh, Oh, here he's, he's coming. My wife is trying to bring him in to be seen, but now he's going to be camera shy now, but, um, he's, he's awesome. And so I, I want you know to promote them and make sure that they, uh, get the recognition they deserve because they were wonderful to deal with. They were super amazing. And, um, there, I, I can't say enough good things about them without just repeating myself. They were great. And so. you said it's it's Paws, right? Paws. Um, yeah, the Philadelphia uh, Animal Welfare Society. So, and they're a nonprofit. Cool. They shoot for no kill, and it's it, it's incredible. Nice. Thanks for sharing that. That's definitely going to be posted on the uh, YouTube link in the information there. So we'll get that there uh, post haste. And Travis, how about yourself? What do you have for us this, for your charity? Uh, so it's really funny, Jordan, you and I are on like the exact same page here where there have been some awesome charities listed by other members of the band so far and, and they focus on education things and music things and that's wonderful and I think we're all in the same boat of we know a million charities that are pushing for more music and more education for children and that's all great. Um, so I was kind of thinking going in a different direction. Um, and so the, the charity that I have is um, the rescue that we got my dog Tempo from, uh, they are To Love a Canine or TLC. Um, they're in Malvern and they they make weekly trips down, uh, down south, um, a lot to like Mississippi, that's where Tempo was from, um, to high kill shelters. And they bring the dogs that they have there back up north. Um, they get them medication that they haven't had. Um, they, they don't have a, a shelter per se for them. Every one of their dogs that they bring up, they find fosters for. Hmm. So when we, when we brought Tempo home, um, we met him at a park um, a couple days before and like kind of got to like meet him and, and see that like he liked us, we liked him. It was a good fit because um, they really do push for that, that good fit. They, they are always there to, to help people after they bring their animals home, but they want to make sure that it's it's going to be that forever home and so they do everything they can to to make that connection um but when we went back a couple of days later to to actually like take tempo home with us he was brought by a family who you know he'd been living with for a couple of weeks and they they had potty trained him they had crate trained him you know he knew a, he knew how to like sit um you know like he was socialized as as like especially young animals really need that and it was awesome because rather than him being like in a crate somewhere all the time, you know, and the classic idea of like a dog shelter where they're just waiting for somebody to come pick them. He was, right. he was with a family who really cared for him. And, you know, it was just a couple weeks, like, you know, he was, he was down in Mississippi. They brought him up, they gave him to this family. They watched out for him. They made sure that he was cared for and loved. And then they brought him in and they, and we took him home and, I'd, I'd like to think that, you know, for the last year and a half plus of us having him, that he's been equally well cared for and loved. And um, so, it, you know, it, it was nice to see a, an animal um, 
rescue that is treating the, the, the dogs exactly the way that, that we, we love on all of our animals. And that's where they start, you know, like they, they yeah. start in a loving place and then they come to us where we just love them even more. So um, they're awesome. They, they do, um, they do accepting of like money donations. Cause you know, you can imagine all of the, the cost associated with all of this, especially um, for medications like heartworm is very present in, in mm. the South in dogs. Um, and so they don't have like any medication in them. They bring them North. And that's usually the first thing that they have to do is pump them full of the proper meds that they should have been having in the first place. Um, many of the dogs do have heartworm. It is very treatable if you get them the meds. Um, but then they also do a list um, for volunteers and for people who also just want to foster the animals. So if you just want to help out with an event, you know, there were lots of people there when we met Tempo that day who were not his foster parents at that time. They just, they work there as, as volunteers and help out with the cool events. And so they, there's lots of opportunity there um, and you get to spend a lot of time with dogs. So can't be that bad, right? <laughs> no, not at all. That's great. No, that's awesome. Both these charities are awesome. And it's, it's, it's funny. Maybe maybe it's because of the title of the uh, the piece that's being uh, dropped tonight, Lil Fur, uh, that you both went along those routes. But at the same time, these are charities that a lot of people don't tend to think about quite often. I mean, granted, it you know we all think about we need to do better for our animal friends and such. But sometimes I feel like these charities are also overlooked way too often, and you know they inherit and inhabit this earth just as much as we do. So it's very important that we tend tend to them as well and keep up with their upkeep. So that's great. Both these charities are awesome. We're definitely going to put them right on our uh, YouTube information detail for Lil Fur. And we'll also be highlighting these throughout the coming weeks while we're gearing up for the next uh, accidental big band drop, which instead of it being a month out, it's actually going to be a little bit, oh, there's Benjamin. Hey. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's actually going to be coming up a little bit sooner. So mark your calendars for February 12th. That's a Friday. We're going to be having a guest vocalist. And we're definitely going to be playing a tune that everyone's familiar with and has heard numerous times. But in light of the holiday coming up that weekend, uh, we thought it was appropriate to have something a little bit more special. So we hope you enjoy that when it comes out. But tonight, we're all about the fur. We're all about little fur, as it were. And for those of you that have joined us, if you have any questions or guys, I mean, Travis, Jordan, if you guys have any questions for each other or even myself, I mean, please, let's go ahead and open it up. We got about six minutes left before we all head over to the YouTube, which there is a link in the chat for anyone that needs it. Uh, we'll all watch it. And then we'll come back here and have a little toast and jam out talk session afterwards. So again, let's open it up for any questions that anybody might have. I'm not seeing anything right now in the chat, but again jordan i i uh i loved as you were talking about getting like videos from your students and like the audio or the video there are mistakes sometimes and and it just it's it's so funny because in in like accidental big band world as i'm editing sound I'm, I'm like trying to make it as perfect as possible and it's like you know we're professionals and we have to put out this this professional product and and then when i'm editing stuff for for my students there are goofy things that happen as as their kids and and they record their shins on on video or you know they they record on their laptop but they tilt the screen way back because it's easier to see as they're playing whatever instrument and you just get a ceiling shot and you know they they didn't sound check beforehand and they're in their tile kitchen with hard surfaces everywhere and it's just echo crazy and on one level you're like oh my god like this is the worst recording like what am i gonna do with this and then at the other side you're just like you know what though they're kids and they're having a good time and and it, it just in my head it's like you know we always we always accept mistakes in in you know in our performances in in our kids performances and in the virtual world we can keep doing that we have this idea that it's like it's recorded it has to be perfect but like when have we ever given a concert with our kids that everything went perfectly every note was played perfectly and there were no mistakes it's it's not it's not realistic and so it i i think thinking of recordings as needing to be perfect versus they're just accurate representations and we want to to represent ourselves as best as we can in those recordings but still at the same time recognize 
our concerts have always had little flubs here and there. I mean, you know, I teach middle school and, you know, sixth graders on clarinet. I, I don't know the last time I had a sixth grade band where we gave a concert and didn't hear at least one, you know, good old clarinet squeal. <laughs> And then, you know, it's funny because they're sixth graders. They still all look around. They're like, who was it? But, you know, like right. it is what it is. I, I, I can say for recordings, I could just dip their volume down, write it a squeak and come back up and problem solved. That's an easy one. But, you know, there are certain things that it's still it's authentic to, you know, the real experience of, of our, you know, children playing band instruments. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. Right. And I think, I think it's important too. like, I, I always look at it as, um, you know, they're doing this from home. So like, you know, you may have a dedicated space for you to do this and to, you know, as it were, make noise in, in your school, but, you know, kids may be in a small space where it's difficult to record and you, you kind of use it to highlight the adversity they're going through in terms of how do I make this work? How do I find the time to do this when normally it's just laid out for me? I know I just have to worry about playing my instrument. Now they're having to worry about a whole nother set of issues. And so I similarly, I try and adjust if you've got a kid that's like blaring out and they're like, on one hand, it's really cool because you can tell that kid is just super stoked. And they're like, I know this part so well. And then you get the other kid that's like, <laughs> as quiet as possible because they know that that's the part that they hate or they struggle with and they don't want to make a mistake which on one hand is is so nice because they clearly care about it and so i uh i try and i try and balance the ensemble but like the recording quality i'm like look similarly it, it, it has to be an authentic representation um you know like you said uh, I, I know a lot of kids are doing it and i've done it a bunch of times uh, a lot of kids have the uh the, the gaming headphones and so it's like they're trying to play their instrument instruments out here the microphone doesn't pick it up and it's like you get this garble mess and so i was like i was troubleshooting like i know that like you said i don't love using the computer mic but especially with elementary they're at a weird age like middle i feel like most middle school kids have a phone now elementary is on the younger side for some of them not not all of them but a good majority do so if they can use an iphone and an app that's great but um yeah you get you get a mix and like you said i i, I think it's funny if you get a kid who squeaks and then the, you watch the video and they're like you know they're like oh well that's that's what happened in the concert too and it's like you know it's not it's i, I want them to see it too and be like look if you didn't if you didn't make a emotion nobody would know like i think we're all that way because we just none of us want to mess up which is you sure. know fun but it's like you know you, you you learn that through the process of doing it so many times like we're we're kind of used to it like maybe you grimace i know i still do i'm really bad about it but it's like you you flub a note and you're like you know you, but in the audience nobody knows you know i just blame it on john when we're live i'm just like no john messed it up he played the wrong note and everybody believes me so when it's probably funny, usually i mean that's part of our bit the uh the like the headset and like the the microphone there um that's not unique to students. I, 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 I like the idea that this is a, this is our behind the scenes, and there was a recording submitted by someone in the accidental big band um, that uh, it was definitely recorded. I won't say who, but uh, in in like the head like the headphones, like the earbuds with the inline microphone, and all of a sudden I'm listening to it and I was like, wait, what happened to the audio? And I think it's just the settings just didn't like pick up the USB microphone and all of a sudden it was like, what, what happened? It, it, it happens to us. I mean, you know, you look at your students, of course it's going to happen to them. It happens to us and we're the professionals here, you know, like, so it, it's, it's oh, yeah. to see it. <laughs> I, I tend to enjoy it more when I see silly things like that from the kids, then I'm never going to get mad about it. If anything, it, it makes it more authentic and more fun. And they're clearly on faith that they send it. So you know what? You're, I'm happy to put this in. Let's make this a talking piece for later. <laughs> well, hey, so uh, not to cut you in short, but our video is currently on its countdown. We got about a minute 40 before it actually goes live. So I recommend you hopping over to YouTube. Uh, the link will be in the description. Of course, check out the video. Again, big shout out to Travis and Jordan. Again, thank you both for joining us tonight.